If you want to get an amazing voice in Audacity, you have to follow some simple steps. The beauty of these steps is that they are time-proof and software-proof. Time-proof means that once you learn the concepts, you can use them with any version of Audacity. Software-proof means this process can be applied with any audio editing software. However, I will only focus on Audacity in this tutorial. Let's talk about some qualities of an amazing voice and how we can get that. The volume level is ideal, it is not too low or not too high, so it is comfortably listenable. There is no noticeable white noise or hissing noise. There is no disturbing background noise. All parts of the audio can be heard comfortably. There are no sudden changes like high or low sounds. Those may be desirable in a movie, but for voiceover it has to be consistent. Your voice sounds smooth or crisp or clear. There is no disturbing room echo or reverb. Most of these can be achieved by editing in Audacity, and some of them require fixing in the recording setup or environment. In this video, I will show you how to fix things with Audacity. The steps I am going to show are applicable for audiobook narration, voiceover, podcasts, or any other purpose. You must start with these steps. The steps are involved with these four audio effects. I will show the proper configuration in each step and explain why you should do it. The order of these effects matters a lot, especially at the beginning of your audio editing journey. Each effect also has to be configured properly. Otherwise, the audio will become worse instead of being better. The correct order of the effects will be like this. So four effects have to be applied in five steps. The normalize effect has to be applied at the start and at the end. If you are a beginner you should follow the order like this. Once you gain experience, you can rearrange the order after understanding what each effect does. Before getting into the details of each step, I will show you a quick and easy way to make the sound better. It is as easy as clicking a button. The waveform you see on the screen is a raw recording. I have not added any audio processing to it yet. I will make a duplicate of this original track. I am duplicating this to compare between the original and improved audio. I will improve the second track using the one-click solution. The single-click solution that I am going to show is developed from years of experience I have. I will select everything inside the second track and will go to Tools. If I go to Apply Macro, you will see some options like Clear Vocal or S Reduction. I also have Improve Overall Experience, Interview Improvement, and Podcast Specific Improvement, etc. I have a total of 11 different variations to tackle different scenarios. All these works on the raw recording. If I apply any of these, the audio will be improved instantly. Let's say I want a clear vocal improvement. The audio is improved almost instantly. Let's listen to the original and improved audio to compare. Why you should use Audacity? Audacity is a free audio recording and editing software. Why you should use Audacity? Audacity is a free audio recording and editing software available on Windows, Mac and Linux. It has the easiest user interface among the audio editing software. Even if you are a beginner, you can start using Audacity with a very small learning curve. You have to learn the basics of audio editing and you are good to go. To clean up audio recordings using Audacity, you have to know some basics about the audio data. Though Audacity is 100% free, it is powerful enough to do professional quality work. Many full-time voice artists and audiobook narrators also use Audacity. You have to understand how to identify an audio problem. You have to know which action you need to take. Then you have to follow through what kind of improvements you are getting with those actions. So you see, what a difference was made in the listening experience just in a single click. You can make this type of single click solution on your own using the effects I show you next. Alternatively, you can get these solutions from me. The 11 fantastic macros are available on my Patreon shop page. The installation process of these macros is very easy. I have received a very positive response from the users of these macros. The macro description page has a link to a detailed installation video, so I am skipping the installation step. It is very simple and straightforward to install. You can get only this macro pack or get the Audacity Bundle. Audacity Bundle has this macro pack and a couple of Audacity courses at a discounted price. The Audacity Bundle has everything you will ever need to learn Audacity. The links are in the description. We will now see the steps in detail to improve a raw recording. I will manually add all the necessary effects on the track. According to this order, Normalize will be the first effect. Select everything inside the track and go to Normalize effect. Normalize is the first effect to apply because the raw audio recording volume is generally low. Normalize can increase the loudness which is better for editing. I will normalize to minus 3 dB peak. The minus 3 dB peak is standard on most of the audio platforms. 
peak means the loudest audio point in your selection. I selected the whole track, so the peak will mean the loudest part of the entire waveform. The concept of the peak is important in audio editing. For example, if you want to submit your audio on some platform, they may have specific requirements on the peak level. I am setting the peak as minus 3 which is the standard value in ACX audiobooks. If you do not know about ACX audiobooks, do not worry. Minus 3 dB is a standard value in many places, and we will follow that for now. The volume level increases as we see the waveform become taller. Normalize may not always increase the loudness level. The volume level will decrease if the audio already has a higher peak than we set in the normalize settings. That is not a problem, and we should not worry about that at this moment. After applying normalize, you can see the noise has become visible in the silent parts. The next effect will be noise reduction. Noise reduction is an optional effect. Whether you should apply the noise reduction depends on two things, if there is audible hissing noise and what the accepted noise floor of the platform you are submitting the audio is. For simplicity, I will discuss only the audible hissing noise in this video. Audible hissing noise means you can hear some hissing noise in the talking parts. If you can hear some hissing noise in the talking parts, the noise reduction effect will reduce some of that. I will need a noise sample from anywhere in the waveform. A noise sample of around half a second or more is good enough. I will select such a sample from the beginning and go to the noise reduction effect. I am selecting the noise sample from the beginning, but it can be selected from any place in the waveform. Noise reduction is a two-step process. In step one, you have to give Audacity a noise sample or profile. Based on it, Audacity will detect noise and remove that noise from audio. In other words, Audacity will consider other parts of the audio as noise when it finds a match with this sample. Click on the Get Noise Profile button. For step two, you have to select a part of the audio from where you want to remove the noise. I want to remove noise from the whole track. I will select everything by double-clicking and go to the noise reduction effect again. Please keep in mind that Audacity can only remove white background noise or hissing noise. Other types of noise like traffic noise or dog barking cannot be removed using Audacity. We will now perform step 2 of the noise reduction process. You have to select the noise reduction settings. These three sliders let you do that. For best noise reduction, all these sliders should be at 6. Best noise reduction means noise will be removed without altering the audio quality. Too much noise reduction can introduce harshness in the audio. The top slider is the noise reduction amount. It should be between 6 to 12. 6 dB reduction is better, but if the noise is too loud, you can go up to 12. Please remember, noise reduction makes the sound harsh. Too much noise reduction makes the listening experience poor. I will set it to 12 for demo purposes, but keep in mind that 6 is the best setting on all three sliders. Make sure the reduce radio button is selected. Click OK to apply the noise reduction settings. The audio is now noise reduced. If we check the beginning part, you will see less noise in the meter. The third effect I will apply is the EQ. I will show you a basic EQ, but keep in mind that EQ is a very vast topic. A good EQ can make a voice sound smooth and clear. I suggest you watch some EQ videos on my channel once you gain some experience in audio editing. You will find the filter curve EQ inside EQ and filters. There are different types of EQ effects, and I will use the filter curve EQ as it is flexible to use. EQ is the process of manipulating volume by frequencies. That means you can increase or decrease the volume of some frequencies. Increasing the volume of frequencies is called a boost, and decreasing the volume is called a cut. Audacity offers some EQ presets in factory presets. I will use a modified version of low roll-off for speech. It is rolling off from 100 Hz. If you know about the fundamental frequency of human voice, it generally starts from 80 Hz, but not below that. So I will adjust the roll-off from 80 Hz. It means I am cutting off frequencies below 80 Hz where no human voice frequency exists. Audio recording can have some noise in those low frequencies, and this cutoff will reduce that noise. A complex EQ will take too much time to explain at this point, so I will apply this basic EQ. I offer customized EQ for voice. But it will make sense if you have some experience in audio editing. I will put some links in the description about my audio services, courses, and tools. I suggest you explore those to find what you need at the moment. After EQ, the next effect is very important. It is the compressor effect that reduces the dynamic range. Dynamic range means the volume gap of loud and quiet sounds of your voice. If the dynamic range is too big, some parts of the recording may become very difficult to hear. The recording I am working with has no such big difference. Still applying the compressor effect will make the voice crunchy and crispy. A little bit of compression makes the recording smoother to listen to. 
Compressor configuration varies for each recording. I will show you a generic compressor with some guidelines. You should check the compress based on peaks. Because I configured the settings based on peak value. If I do not keep this box checked, it will alter the compression mode, and my settings may not be valid for that compression mode. The compressor will be active above the threshold value. It is an important setting in the compressor. If I set a threshold like minus 9, the compressor will only be active above minus 9 dB. The lower I go, the more compression will happen. If I set minus 15, then I will get more compression than if I had set minus 9. If you set this value too low, the sound may become unnatural. For this video, I will use minus 15 dB. You should use something between minus 9 and minus 15 based on how much compression you need. The noise floor should be higher than the noise recording in the meter. The default minus 40 dB will be okay for this audio sample. The ratio sets how much compression will be done. The more ratio you set, the more compression will be done. Usually something between 2 to 1 and 4 to 1 works on most of the recording. I will use 3 to 1. Please note that the amount of compression needed depends on the dynamic range. Too much compression can make the voice unrealistic. If you see current settings making your voice unnatural, you should apply settings with less compression. I will keep attack time and release time to its default value. The makeup gain checkbox does not matter if I normalize the audio after compression. I will apply these compression settings. The compression is done, and I will apply normalize again to adjust its peak level. Compression can make the peak louder than the standard minus 3 dB peak. Normalize to minus 3 dB will adjust the peak to the standard level. The editing is done, and let's listen to it. Why you should use Audacity? Audacity is a free audio recording and editing software available on Windows, Mac and Linux. It has the easiest user interface among the audio editing software. Even if you are a beginner, you can start using Audacity with a very small so this was the process of making raw audio better in Audacity. If you think about meeting the guidelines of some platforms, you may have to use effects like loudness normalization. Things like that are taught in my Audacity course for beginners. If you want to get professional quality editing, I recommend you enroll in the course. Even if you do not need professional grade audio, but want to learn audio editing in an easy and step-by-step -step manner, this course will help. I will put the course link and macro pack link in the description. You can also think of becoming a lifetime member. Once you become a lifetime member, you can access all the courses and tools for free. There are bonuses like personalized EQ and macro that I make just for you. You will also get a live video training for free. Lifetime membership is amazing for those who want professional quality audio. As you gain experience, you will need help in different areas of audio editing. Lifetime membership makes sure nothing can go wrong for you. You will find links in the description.